Hello, and welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to be continuing on. This is part three in a three-part series of forging a Gothic door knocker. In part one, we made the door bolt in the portion that the, the ring of the door knocker would take a hit up against. So uh, I suggest you go watch part one for that. And then we also made the clevis portion or the part that's going to take and swing or the hinge portion that the decorative door knocker is going to swing from. In part two, we actually made the hoop, the bail, or whatever you want to take and call the ring portion of the door knocker. And that was in part two of the video series. So if you need to reference how we've got to these points, I will link up both those parts in the description down below. So now that we have our pieces, I've went ahead and I've soaked these out in a vinegar bath or a pickling solution. That is just basically 100% uh, vinegar. I'll put a link in the description to the actual product that I use. It's made by HDX. It's sold at Home Depots all around the world. So, uh, well, I am assuming all around the world if you can get them, but it has a 10% acidity rating to it versus like your standard stuff that you would get like a white vinegar at 3%. So it works much quicker. It's highly concentrate. Um, so, you know, it works and cleans parts pretty darn well. So we're going to start with the clevis portion first, and then we will go over to the door bolt portion and I'll show you what we do there. The thing that we need to do with the door bolt is we need to clean up this shank and turn it completely round with a file in order to take and thread this piece in order to have this threaded and then we will drill and tap the nut to suit. I'm not going to cover drilling and tapping the nut. It's just basically it's like any other drilled hole and where you run a tap in. I'm just not going to cover that to save time and interest of time since the series has already drug on pretty darn long. But I will show you however how to file this up. Um, how to file this up in order to take and run threads on it. And then I'll show you the finished product after we're all said and done. So let's start here. So this is all fine. This is going to be beaten into the door, the nail shank here. But what's not fine is the transitions. As you can see, it's pretty rough around the face. And on the collar portion here, I need to clean up some of those lines. So what I'm going to start with first is I want to start by cleaning up the faces. And we're just going to lock this straight in the vise. Be careful when locking this in the vise. You may want to use a piece of wood to grip it. I've got a pair of soft jaws in here. You don't want to grip it just in the steel vise jaws themselves. And then I'm going to use this half round bastard file. And it's a fairly coarse cut file for this. Now, this is almost wore out, so it's not as coarse as it should be, but it'll do the job nonetheless. So you're gonna take even push strokes and try to keep it in one surface plane. And as you do that, you will highlight your low areas. Now, I have had a few classes where I have taught people things like this and when they start doing any sort of grinding work or filing work, as soon as they saw a low area, they tried to get down in that low area to remove that dark spot. You can't do that when you're truing up the plane on a surface. You need to work this in the same angle, the same pitch, roll or yaw of the, of the uh, file itself until it gets all the way down to you no longer see those, and then it's trued up. Since this is meant to be, um, you know, a gothic style door knocker, it is okay. You're not trying to go for completely shiny with these pieces. And in fact, we're going to reheat these for the finish work anyhow, because we don't want them to be brightly finished. We want it to look like an old door knocker. So if you leave a little bit of those, say you start filing away, and you're getting a little too thin for your liking, don't be afraid to step away from the file. So we'll go ahead and just keep filing this up. Try to get the surface. Now I'm cross filing opposed to the original grain. And now we're gonna hash back this way against that grain. And that's gonna bring us down to one nice, even, smooth surface finish. 
and it'll give us a nice attractive finish later on. As you see, I got a little bit more to go here right in the crook, but that basically trued it up fairly nice. Um, it could go a little bit more, but I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that because we're just going to, that's going to be really close to the door. So when that gets driven in, you're not even going to see that portion. Uh, if you file off too much, you go too far and then things start looking whopper jaw and weird on you. So we'll go ahead and do the other side now. The other side has less work to be done on it. So I'm happy about that. As you can see, this doesn't take very long. If you have a belt sander or belt grinder, this can go very quickly. And it's definitely worth the investment or the consideration to do. But as you can see, this will file just fine. Now I'm starting to get little chunks stuck in the file. I don't know if you all can see those. I'm starting to get little chunky bits in the file. I'm going to use a file carter. I'll put a link to the files that I use uh, most often. Those are affiliate links, so if you purchase them, uh, I get a small kickback for sending traffic over to Amazon or wherever and at no additional cost to you. It's a great way of supporting this channel and the content we do here. So if you do use those links, that does go to help support Jessica and I here at Christ and Ryan Works, and we thank you for that. But I'll put a link to this file carter as well. That's got the file all clean. Now we can continue around. Now I asked my master smith, Tom Latney, what, uh, what was the cause to some of the filing issues that I was having. What I was doing is I was getting down to fine mill files to do a really nice shiny finish, and I was getting scrapes across the piece with the file in that those scrapes are because of this right here those little those little bits that get stuck in the teeth those are called pins or you get this pinning effect and that pinning effect or pinging effect is what ends up scratching up the surface and you never get those out you always have a scratch going on so you have to file card quite often i asked him what caused that and it's mainly because the file is not releasing the chip as it goes out. You can either oil the file ever so slightly, or you can also take some soapstone. You could coat it in chalk or soapstone, but if you load up the file with chalk and soapstone, it won't file as quickly. Again, I'm just cleaning up that surface and that's done. Okay, I've got that surface done, that surface done. Now we're going to go ahead and start cleaning up the profile. Now as we clean up the profile work, now it'll get a little trickier gripping this in the vise, but you're going to, want to take and match your plane on the portion that's been forged. And work with nice, even file strokes. We're not trying to go crazy here. I'll show you what I mean. So we're just cleaning that up. We want nice, even file strokes. Matching the pitch all the way across of our center portion. That squeak's gonna get really on my nerves. That'll happen if you start filing back towards the jaws of the vise in any direction. If I go this way, it's going to make that same squeaking noise. So that's why I said it gets interesting now to take and grip this piece and be able to file your plane. So I'm going to set up in the vise like so. And I'm going to continue to work that. Again, this is requiring the bare bones minimum of filing. That's why we did most of our forging and chasing in work that we could and did a clean job of forging. And this is where accuracy is key at the anvil.
So occasionally you'll hear me make statements about accuracy, things you can do for you to help improve your accuracy as you're hammering there. And those statements are true. You have to make sure that you, in this type of work, that you file cleanly and proficiently at the anvil as you go along. And that's just a good practice regardless. A lot of times in this modern world we live in, you know, we succumb to the thing of, oh, I'll file that, I'll grind that out later because we have grinders, you know. We have all sorts of power equipment. And so we're like, oh, well, we'll just grind that or throw the Dremel on that later. No big deal. Nothing to worry about. You know, I don't have to be as careful with my forging uh, because I've got technology on my side, which is very true. But then it t takes and makes you more of a grinder than an actual smith, and it hurts your skill level, in my humble opinion. Or not so humble opinion. <laughs> Give you guys some directive commentary here. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that statement if you made it to this point in the video down in the comment section down below. So do you, if you can hear it starting to get kind of rough, it's starting to make a rough noise because I'm starting to get those pins show up on the edge of my file. And that's starting to create an issue with me leaving a rough surface finish. So you gotta file those pins out. If you're having a problem where your file's starting to skate and do weird stuff on you, that's probably because of that. Okay. We're really getting that cleaned up now. Put that in the vise just a little bit different. Different angles work for you. And now back here, I didn't do as good a clean job forging. And now I have to remove a lot more material with a file. If I would have took a little extra time and chased that a little deeper and not relied on just taking care of it with the file, I would have been better off. This would have looked a little bit better. Just a little bit better. And just little things like that, they add up. Because once you get to file work, file work can take an impressive amount of time. Okay. So I, I'm going to state this. I'm going to do the rough filing for camera, and I'll do a little final filing later on at my own leisure. So this way I'm not making you guys watch, uh, you know, a four hour tutorial here on YouTube about this. So I'm gonna true up the edges now. Now you gotta remember you're working a radius. You could do this multiple ways. Um, there's a subscriber to the YouTube channel here named Techronmatic. He had posed to me the proper way of filing. He reminded me of something that, you know, I totally forgot from one of Tom Latinay's classes I took. But he had mentioned in one of the comment sections the way to file a radius is to take and rotate the file like this as you go around and not try to follow like this because the file falls off and it only cuts in one plane and leaves you with a flat. As where if you go like this, you work that handle down you're constantly taking off even amounts of material as you go around. So thank you, Techrun Matic, for that. I appreciate you, sir. I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description down below. Now I'm gonna say one thing. A lot of people will say, man, I just hate file work. And usually when you hate file work, it's because well, some people, just, it's not their preference thing to do. Mine it is. I really enjoy filing. 
I find it very stress relieving. I can just sit here and relax, take my time, as our forging is a very fast paced endeavor. Um, just doing decorative file work, to me that's the fun portion of all this hard work that you've put in to the piece. Now that's just my opinion. You know, you can, some people like, again, some people like file work, some people don't. Usually when you don't like a lot of file work, you don't feel that you're that that, that you're particularly that drawn to it. And a lot of times that is because of a a skill based thing. You need to learn some techniques to take and help your file file work along. It's kind of like if you really dread doing a specific forging operation. A lot of times that dread can be alleviated by taking some courses and or some more study on that particular work and how to do it and uh, it makes it less arduous of a task for you. Alright, so almost done with this piece. Again, I'll take this down with little finer files later on. Right now, it's not important for that. All right, so that's as far as I'll take the piece down. As you can see, we've shined that right up. We've trued up the edges here, made it look a little bit more presentable. That's fine. Now this will get reheated and we'll do that um, here in a little bit. We will do the finish work to this piece so you can see how that gets done. But we'll set that aside for right now. And now we're going to work on the door bolt piece. So now we need to take and turn this roughly forged round piece into a nice smooth round that we can then thread. Uh, the smoother you get this cylindrical, you make the smoother you make this, the nicer the looking thread that you'll be able to produce. Now I've left this long because we're not going to go through this much of the door. We are going to actually only be putting this on a three-quarter plywood plank. So really I just need to focus in right up nice next to this. And I already know that my file here is about three quarters of an inch wide or three or 20 mil, if you will. So I'm just gonna keep that sucked up against the bolt and that should file the section that I need perfectly smooth. I might come out just a bit from that. Um, you know, who knows, just to give myself a little extra wiggle room. But that's what we're going to do. So the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to take and lock this off in the vise where it's hanging out from the edge. It is good if you have something that you could put in here to stop this from springing, if you will. I didn't bring anything with me just yet, but we could probably put this in here just to help stop some of the springing action that this vise is going to want to do, taking and drawing it down at a diagonal. And now we're going to file right up close to that nut. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create some flats. Just like when you draw down a piece of material, you always start with flats first. I learned this little technique from Peter Ross. But you start with flats first, okay? And then you take off the corners of those flats and then you take the corners off of those flats and then you go to round. So it's just like, just like how you would do drawing down a piece of material. It's the same exact process. So we're just gonna establish all of our flats on the piece to get all the roughness cleared off. And now this, bolt has already been forged pretty close to size. I'm going to have to rotate that. Excuse me guys, I probably just hit that microphone on you. This bolt has already been forged pretty close to the size we need to thread, so we don't want to get too carried away with this. We just want to take those flats off and we're going to take out some of the main divots. I'm going to rotate that and go again. So there we 
have it. Okay, come across flat. Yeah. Nope, it's gonna whistle on me, so we're gonna just rotate it ever so lightly. Show you guys the result here in a second. I'm just kind of playing this in real time so you get some idea on how much time this will take you to personally do um, based upon skill level. It's going to take a little bit of time to do this. Obviously, if you have a lathe or something, you can just chuck this up and take it to the right size that you need. That could be very beneficial for you. So something to maybe check into. Again, don't have to clean this up by much. It's just a little bit. Again, do a cleaner job of forging, and you'll have a pretty clean job here done as well. Okay, now that I've made it around, I'm going to start removing those flats. Hopefully you guys can see this. So over here, we've still got those flats happening. Over here, we're starting to smooth it up. So now it's time to just smooth the whole piece up. So that's what we're going to work on now. And you may have to unlock and relock this several times just by having this thing out. It's going to do that to you. Rotate it, and go again. So this is where it's also good to challenge yourself a little bit. Maybe you're not good at file work. Maybe that's not one of your strong suits, you know? And if it's not one of your strong suits, it's a good thing to practice. Good thing to practice. One day you may not have the tooling and the equipment that you once had. It's been many a times where people's shops have, for whatever reason, whether it was an economic issue or economic downturn, they had to sell off their shop, their initial shop, or, you know, life happened, maybe they got sick, they had to pay for something out of the ordinary. They couldn't do it for a while, and here it is 10, 15, 20 years later, they've come back to the trade, and they don't have all the fancy tools and power equipment that they once had, and it's good to know these hand skills. It's really good to know these hand skills and to practice these hand skills on a regular so this way it kind of guards you against that calamity in your life. You can still do excellent work, even without power tools and machinery. So there we go. We've got a few divots there, but I'm not going to be able to file those out and still stay to size. So that's good. So now, we'll, so now I'll have to cut this off, cut this end off, and then this will be uh, threaded. The way we'll do that is obviously in this vise here, in do it right in here. But before we do that, as you can see, I've left some hash marking around there. We're going to go ahead and clean that up. Move this piece out of here. Even though that'll be against the door, I kind of just want it gone for future reference. You know, when somebody looks at this piece, maybe in a hundred years, they'll be like, hey, that guy was actually a particularly skilled craftsperson. 
and not a complete hack. So we're just gonna take it, square that off, take some of that roughness of that file off. This is really nothing more than just me being a Nancy about my work here. Okay, so let me catch you up. Uh, it's been quite some time later. It's actually been about an hour or so uh, after taking and prepping all this work to be finished up. I've got my decorative nut drilled and tapped and the bolt threaded for use. So that's gonna work out pretty good. Uh, so that's all good. These won't require any other type of finish work other than to just take and be heat blackened. So that's what we're gonna do with those. Uh, same thing with this piece here. It needs to be heat blackened, but we'll do that in the next step of setting the hoop itself. So the first main portion, the main part that we're gonna concern ourselves with is taking and getting that hoop set and then we will go on to fiddling around with the rest of these pieces later on. But we've got that nice and threaded. There is a little bit of slop. I had to change my original thread size because again, I filed down just a bit too much. Um, but you know, hey, we're working with what we got here. The ideal of this was to keep everything to 150 millimeters and just use the pieces off of a six inch long three quarter square bar and uh, I have done that successfully so far. Anyways, so I've got this piece nice and heated up. It's not super hot. It's just gotten above a bright orange in temperature. And now what we are going to do is we're gonna grab it by our rosette ever so gently, and we're gonna start pushing this piece together. So we wanna take and get a little extra bend into this piece down low. And before we get it too close, we wanna make sure that we can get this in between there. It's gonna take a, just a little bit of adjustment. There we go. Ooh, just barely got it in there. I should probably push that down there. There we go. Got that knocked again. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me again. Woo wee, that was loud. Might just have to edit that out. So there we go, we're getting this really nice and close. We're just gonna hammer over whatever end we think needs to come over to it. And we're just gonna try to take and close that up. So this way that'll still swing freely, but be exactly meeting up nice and centrally located. And there you have it. So that's put together. That's what we're wanting. Uh, I would suggest, however, that's kind of hot. So don't grip a hold of that little bit there. Of course, drop forge it once, that's always a good thing. So now we're gonna heat this whole piece up again and we're gonna continue to reset the shape here now that it's into this piece. So we're gonna heat this whole piece up and we're gonna go out again. So here we go and put this back in the fire. And this is where I say that it will uh, you know, we don't have to heat this up and blacken it separate. We'll put it all together. We will wire brush it really good uh, while it cools back down into the lower temperatures and then we will go ahead and coat it. So ideal here is we just want to take and get this piece nice and hot and continue to shape out our ring a little bit so this way that ring is still nice and flowy. Once this thing cools down, it will contract nicely and that ring won't ever come back out of that staple, which is nice. I called it a staple, it's a nail, the door nail, or whatever you wanna call it. Um, it'll be in just good shape and we won't have to worry about it. So I've got an open top fire right now because I'm not trying to bring this up to any sort of a welding heat or big high scaling heat. I'm just trying to take it up to a dull orange to maybe a bright, uh, really super bright red at the lowest temp. And then we're gonna do our adjustments that we have to do. And it's just really light work at this point. Do not get carried away. It's a habit to kind of get carried away with this type stuff. Don't get carried away with trying to do too much in one heat. Things can get whopper jaw on you and uh, you're not gonna like that at all. So here we go. 
I'll pull this out. The whole piece is nice and red. I'm just giving my hoops a bit more shaping, a little more love. Drop it again. As I said, this is at the time and point where, where we're making any adjustments that need to be made to the piece. I'm going to come over the horn a little bit. Just out some of my roundness that I need to have. And you'll also notice that I am using I am using a wooden mallet. This is highly beneficial for this type of work. I would not suggest you use anything but because by the time you get done hammering around on this with a regular hand hammer, you'll have this thing pretty well destroyed. So don't get caught up with doing this with a regular hand hammer. Okay, so that's nice and tight. That's what we want. And now it's time to brush it. Brush this piece really good. Give it some good firm brushings on that side to just give it a little bit of that sheen, that nice little historical brushing action here. That's why we're not going crazy with this piece said we didn't want this to be brightened finish drop it for a third time always effective always want to make sure you drop it at least three times maybe four <laughs> part of the heavy brushing of the scale and you see as we brush it a lot down into the darker heats You see how that gives it a really nice sheen to it. So now you guys can see how that project comes together. So we're going to let that cool for a second. And while that cools, before we put on our finish, we're going to go ahead and heat up the other pieces and components. You can heat them up individually or together. I suggest to heat them up individually, piece by piece, and just give them a little light brushing. Uh, it'll really help you out. So put one at a time in there. You can do multiples if you got the bed of your thing packed nicely. And again, the ideal here is just to bring them up to a dull red just to get all the surface colors the same. Or what they would consider a light scaling heat. So now I'm going to grip my piece and a pair of tongs here. This should be cooled down just a fuzz. So now we're going to go ahead and I've got a bit of paste wax here, min wax, finishing wax. It's like a wood wax that you would put on uh, materials. And I'm going to start coating this piece in that. You want to do this in a well ventilated area. If you can, that's always advisable. But you want to be able to let your piece set for a minute before you apply this type of waxed finish. If this is for a customer or a client and they're not trying to go for the historical approach, they're just looking for a really nice looking piece, it would be my suggestion after you've gotten it all darkened with scale to just go ahead and clear coat it, give it a clear coat finish, and that would be a nice proper finish that you can do. That'll be good enough. Uh, and probably satisfy most of that. I'm going with a more traditional approach with doing like a hot oiled or hot waxed finish. And I find that the Min Wax Paste Wax really puts on a really nice black finish. And not only does it give it a nice black finish, it retains some of that sheen that you've seen that we, uh, wire, br that we wire brushed into. So it gives it a really nice sheen to it, I think. I think it gives it a really nice look myself. So we'll clean that up and we'll let that set for a second as it cools. The other pieces are almost up to temperature. My mallet out of the way. Again, I'll put the link for this in the description, but it's a Min Wax finishing paste wax. You can pick this up at any hardware store. So. Pick it up anywhere, I'm pretty sure 
Uh, don't know about Cross the Pond or around the rest of the world, but I know here in America you can pick it up at any hardware store. Nice, easy peasy. It's just a matter of wiping this whole thing down, getting it to a nice, even result. I'll even wipe down the part that's going to be peened over on the other side of the door. Okay, so there we have it. You want this to swing nice and freely. You don't want this to hang up. You don't want to have to like, eh, eh. you know, you want it to t really be able to swing freely by itself on its own volition. Um, that's going to make it really knock nicely when it strikes the door, but there you have it. I'm going to set that off to one side get a little more wax on this piece here and I'm going to grab out the pieces that need to be waxed. The other odds and end pieces, before we wax them, obviously we're going to need to take and brush them good. So there we go. We're in a very, very dull color, like a really dull red. That's going to work nicely for our purposes. This is the decorative washer that will get peened into on the other side of the door. Rotate my piece around. Not trying to go crazy here, just trying to give it a little something. If you do this, if you try to wax it too soon, what you'll find is, is it won't it won't actually take, the wax won't take, and you'll get an uneven finish. So if you want to avoid that, try to let the piece rest for a few seconds, up to maybe a minute, to really get in there and make the most of it. So, so that's going to work fine, just like that. So there you all have it. And I'll get a little more wax on this rag. And grab out another piece. So now this is going to be our decorative nut piece. We'll go ahead and brush it down. Now this has threads in it, so we want to be real careful of those threads that we don't distort that nut in any way, like dropping it on the floor. If you can keep from doing that, that would be good. But since this is hot, you want to be careful that you're not just bending on it willy-nilly because there's no coming back from that. So you'll just have to make a new piece. Brush it clean on the front side. Rotate it. I'll hold it again. Brush it clean. You guys can see there. And now we're going to go ahead. And I actually might wait on this. I'll let this cool down for a second. I want that to cool for a second while I get the other piece. Same thing with this piece, you want to be real careful with it. This is going to be the bolt or the striking bolt. You want to grip it nice and evenly and just be careful with it. Don't destroy your threads that you've cut on it. Okay, set that to one side. Good enough for this piece. All right, got that all nice and even like. We want it there. Now, however tempting it may be for you to just dunk this into min wax like that, this has a flash point, pretty low flash point. That's why we're doing this at a really low temperature. You can see it smoking off really quick. That is why we're doing this at a really low temperature. 
do not dunk it into the wax itself. It could catch fire. Um, those heat stresses and stuff and vaping off could end up catching something on fire, so don't do that. Always wipe it with a rag. If this rag were to catch fire, I'm right by this. I'm right, right by the forge. I could just throw it in the forge and uh, wouldn't be no problem at all. So, you know, just be careful. Use some common sense when you're using hot finishes like a waxed, hot waxed finish. Different waxes react differently with heat. All right, we've got that coated good. And we'll just let that cool down. So there's all the pieces. That's how you finish this um, with a waxed finish. Obviously, there's a lot of different ways that you can do finishes. You could do a hot oil finish. This could be a more traditional, like a beeswax finish or some sort of lard or fat type finish would be more traditional than uh, just using a wax like this. But uh, you guys basically get the point. So in interest of time, I've kept you guys long enough. I'm going to go ahead and show you the finished piece when this is on the door, but I'm going to walk you through real quick what you would do to mount this. You would drill a hole that is approximately the size or the starting size of the end of your bolt. Then you would drive this piece through that hole to hang the actual door knocker from the piece. We, we're going to be doing some other door knockers, and I may just show that process um, in more in depth later on. Comment in the comment section if you want that to be a part of my next video uh, to actually show that process. Um, but that's basically it on that front. Then you just drill a hole the size of your knocking bolt that, that strikes up against. Drill that straight through the door and then mount your washer or your decorative nut on the back side. Uh, once that is through, like on the washer for this portion here, for the clevis piece, all you're going to do is lightly brad over, saw off the excess, and lightly peen over the amount of material that's on the back side to hold that washer on. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, uh, if it didn't, you ask questions in the comment section down below. But uh, stick around to watch the finished photos, uh, finished video of this little butte uh, once it's fully hung on its display board. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me during this 150 millimeter challenge. If you'd like to support what we do here at Christ Center Ironworks, consider sharing this around with a friend. As always, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.